Hello everyone, welcome to another part of the shear wall design. In the previous part, we have already discussed about what is the definition of the shear wall, what is the function of the shear wall. Also, we have discussed that what is the difference between a shear wall and column. Also, we have seen that what could be a good location or we can say an ideal location of putting the shear wall in our building. Also, we have seen that what is the shape of the shear wall. So these all the things we have already discussed in the previous part of the shear wall design. Now in this part of the shear wall design we are going to study further. So the first topic we are going to study in this part is your special shear wall classifications. How you can classify the shear wall on the basis of length and height ratio. So this is the first thing we are going to study it. So the first classification is your squared wall classifications. The squared wall is your low rise shear wall so you can say this as a low rise shear wall so what is happening here if height to the length ratio of shear wall is lesser than one then we will call it as a squared wall or we can also call it as a low rise shear wall so how is it possible let's suppose that you have a height of 2 meter and the length of the shear wall is having a 3 meter if you divide you will get it 0 0.6 so it is lesser than 1 definitely it is lesser than 1 then we will call it as a squared wall so generally a squared wall or a low right shear wall we can say it which height to the length ratio if it is lesser than 1 then we will call it as a squared wall I think it is very clear to you now let us move to the next type of the wall which is intermediate wall. As the name says you that it is going to be intermediate between a squared wall and the cylinder wall. Now let us look at it, what is happening in intermediate wall. If height to the length ratio of the shear wall are between 1 to 2 then we will call it that wall as an intermediate wall. Let's suppose that I have a shear wall which height is 3 meter and its length is 2 meter so when I will divide 2 of this I will get it 1.5 then I will call it that this wall is an intermediate wall now let us look at that what is the cylinder wall then so the third type which we are getting is a cylinder wall so this wall is a tall wall also so we can call it that this wall is tall wall now what is happening in this cylinder wall if height to the length ratio if it is greater than 2 then we will call it this as a cylinder wall now let us understand by taking an example if height of the shear wall is having a 4 meter and the length of the shear wall let's suppose that it is having 1.5 so when you divide these two things you will get it 2.6 so if you are getting ratio more than 2 then this wall will come under the cylinder wall no, I think you have understood it clearly that what are the different classification of the shear wall are there. So the first one was a squared wall or we can say it is a low rise wall. Then second was intermediate wall which was between the squared wall and the cylinder wall. And the third was a cylinder wall which is the tall wall. So if I am going to just draw the diagram. So how is going to look it? So a squared wall will be looking somewhere like this a small then intermediate wall will be looked something like this and tall wall will be looked something like this now let us move to the next topic which is your minimum thickness for the shear wall so what could be the minimum thickness of the shear wall which we can provide in our building thickness we can call it depth also so what could be the minimum depth we have to keep it for the shear wall for the building now the first point is that the minimum thickness should not be lesser than 150 mm so the thickness for the shear wall you are providing in your building should not be lesser than 150 mm. But here one important thing I would like to tell you that I would recommend you to use minimum thickness of 200 mm in your building. Don't use it 150 mm. 150 is very very thin wall. So I will not recommend you to use 150 mm. Try to use at least 200 mm for the minimum thickness for the shear wall. Now the second thing is that for the coupled shear wall the minimum thickness which you are going to provide is 300 mm. 
no i think it is very clear to you so at least you have to provide 200 mm for generally shear wall and for the coupled shear wall you have to give it at least 300 mm as a minimum thickness now next point is that the minimum thickness provided must conform to the fire resistance requirement based on the occupancy as laid down in is456 so minimum thickness which you are going to provide for the shear wall also you have to fulfill from is456 code for the confirming that the minimum thickness which you are going to give it should have a fire resistance to that let's suppose that if you are given a very less thickness of the shear wall then that is less, more chance to catch the fire in that so at least you have to give it that much thickness that it should resist the fire so that has to be clear from is456 code so while providing this minimum thickness you also required to look at this code to confirm that what thickness you are giving is okay with this code or not so you have to compile with this code also is456 code also for the fire resistance to give the minimum thickness for the shear wall now let us move to the next topic which is your minimum reinforcement to be provided for the shear wall so on the basis of different type of the walls we have to give it the minimum reinforcement so i have already discussed the different type of the walls like a squared wall intermediate wall and the cylinder wall so on the basis of this wall there is a minimum reinforcement that need to be provided in the shear wall now this is the minimum reinforcement should be given for the different type of the walls now this thing we look at in very detail when we will go for design for the shear wall so that time also we will look at this in very detail that what should the minimum reinforcement should be given for the shear wall 